Thank you for joining the first essay edit of our application workshop. So what I've done here is recreated students' uh, essay drafts so I can detail from brainstorming to the final product, you know, kind of how a student goes from this early, early uh, brainstorming process, working through a few rounds of revisions, and, you know, eventually how you get to that final product. Along the way, I'll point out some things that I look for at each stage in this process. We'll work on things like writing more efficiently, editing for style and tone, choosing words, uh, integrating essays with one another. I've split up the essays into different components. And so uh, in the lecture section, you can see this, this document here. So if you want to get a closer look, especially when it comes to those line by line edits, you can access the single document um, or the, the multiple videos that it's split into. So I've chosen this file to begin with because it has a, a really great process from uh, starting with brainstorming for each of the essays, and then we look at the uh, first drafts of essay A, the different ideas that they have, uh, before going on to later rounds of edits, the first draft. And we have the, the structural edit. So structural editing, I mean kind of big picture suggestions. This is paragraph order, uh, overall content, uh, and then line edits are literally the line by line edits where you're reading each sentence, each word to make sure everything flows correctly. And then at the end of this video, I'll do a, a live proofread. So I like to use a software called Grammarly. So I use Grammarly at the very end of my editing process. It really helps capture uh, awkward phrases, uh, good word choice suggestions, um, and also just kind of grammar and, and making sure all of your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted. Grammar isn't my best thing. I don't always have the best doctor details. So uh, Grammarly does have a free option, and I, I definitely recommend uh, for you to use it. Um, I find it to be helpful. But for now, we will turn off Grammarly. So that way we can focus on this comment section here on the right-hand side. So let's go back up to the top. So this is an applicant who is applying for computer science. We began working together uh, during the summer after their junior year. And they have kind of a few different ideas. So in our initial emails, I sort of say, you know, what, what do you think about writing about? And she had kind of three different things she was considering, family and home, her neighborhood and her community, especially the competitive high school she goes to, kind of growing up in a uh, kind of a, an Indian American family and some of the cultural difficulties she had adjusting to, to life in her, in her city in Dallas. Um, the second essay, so I'll do a, a separate video on that, but she's going to write about her, her musical journey. And this was really central to her resume. And then you can see how her resume develops in later workshops. But for now, let's get right to it. Let's see what she has in mind for her essay A draft one. So she's discussing the relationship with her mother and kind of tells a variety of different stories and examples of how uh, her mother with her relationship with her mother can be pretty can be pretty tough um, with her family you know living far away losing a loved one uh, at an early age i uh, provide some kind of various comments here and especially with these first drafts it's really important not to focus so much on things like style and tone or word choice uh, really the most important part of the the early draft process is to produce as much content as possible so i always tell students just write i mean write anything that you think might be relevant and i can help you figure out how these pieces fit together. So she has, you know, a pretty long essay already written about the relationship with her mother, but I kind of say, well, maybe we can kind of combine these with some of the different ideas and we'll find out ways to integrate your different content suggestions and, and also write more efficiently. So you can see, you know, there's kind of a, a lot of longer sentences here that, that may not add too much. And so in future edits, we'll work on condensing the, these, these, you know, important ideas, but writing more economically. Her second idea was kind of a situation being bullied, especially in elementary school. Her mom gave her Indian food at lunch and some of the kids at school made fun of her. And, uh, you know, it's kind of this, you know, kind of the struggle of, of combining both both cultures and, and integrating into her community. And so my suggestion with this is I say, hey, well, let's maybe try and figure out, OK, if your your mom, your mom comes from India and she has relatives in India and India is important in your life. Let's see if we can find some way to combine this. Um, this content and integrate it with a discussion of how you how you know the environment which you're raised is one that's mixed and it's, it's not always easy and she continues on the same theme she's at school and uh teachers kind of habitually mispronounce her name and um so she's you know it's kind of a rough time both in the lunchroom and in, in the classroom and, and even though these first drafts are i don't know something it's, she's wrote 
almost a thousand words, I think. Let's see, word count. Yeah, 750 words. But this is just right about the right length that I like to see for these first drafts. You know, your SAA should be a few hundred words over the, the recommended word limit. And so here, I, you know, essentially I say to her, like, hey, like, this is all great. You know, we've got some really great content here. Don't worry so much about the specifics. But see if you can find a way to integrate these ideas together into making one kind of cohesive first draft of her essay. So we can see at the beginning that she starts with the discussion of her mother, how her, how her mother's parents passed away, her brother's not so close. Um, and then a kind of a departure from the first essay, she starts to kind of focus on, uh, you know, how this really – created the struggle. It's a lot more complex than just her mom kind of voicing her problems, but she's saying, well, my mom's, you know, talking about her problems and I'm having issues in, in kindergarten. My teacher can't pronounce my name. I'm at lunch and kind of people are, are picking on me. I don't look forward to the first year of school. And so what we have here is a portrait of a, of a little bit more of a complex relationship than, than it first meets the eye. And so this student is, is introducing, you know, a little bit more nuance, a little more maturity into, into her, her essay responses. And so we still we have some you know pretty long sentences here, but again we'll work on kind of narrowing that down later on. And then we have the the issue of the the bullying at lunch and how she doesn't want her mom to send her with Indian food. And as I gotten older, my mom's rants have grown worse. And you know so it's still this is a still pretty rough around the edges draft. And she kind of concludes with kind of meaningful lessons, takeaways, characteristics, and you know saying hey like you know I just have a loving relationship with my mom. I'm fortunate to have her, but you know, it has been a struggle and, you know, sometimes it's it's negative, but other times it's positive as well. And, you know, in the second essay, essay B, she talks more about how she connects with Indian singing through Carnatic singing. And so what we'll end up seeing with the final drafts are a real integration of essays A and B. But for now, we have the foundation in place and then we'll start kind of narrowing things down a little bit more. So let's look at first the structural suggestions. So you'll see in immediately that I that I began making line by line edits. The the really important part of this essay is is in terms of the structural edits is at the end. So I provide suggestions along the way whenever whenever a student says something, for example, like I was eating lunch or I was visiting my family. Anytime that you can be more concrete or more specific, the better off you are. So instead of saying I was eating my lunch, I literally talk about what food you were eating. Or if there was an event that happened, I I told my I stood up for myself from the bullying and told my teacher. And, you know, it's kind of important to, to con continue with the phrase finishing that story. But with this essay in particular, I mentioned that we eventually integrated our essays A and B. And so that's where I, you know, kind of had the suggestion at the end, because these essays should ring, read like one long response rather than three or four separate prompts. And so, so we talk about it. And so during, through the emails, we talk about how Indian carnatic singing is really important to her life. And I mentioned that by concluding essay A, uh, with with a hint or a mention of this as kind of a, a point of being proud of, of her cultural background, you can also tie in these same takeaways, you know, standing up for yourself, being someone you can rely on, and being a stronger, competent person, and a good friend and family member. So those are the structural edits I suggested to this student. And then now I'll change to the uh, markup so you can actually see the edits that I suggested. So... I know this can be a little overwhelming at first to see because there's a lot of kind of underlines and strike throughs, but the underline words are essentially the ones that I added and the strike through ones are the, the lines that I removed. And so it may be uh, helpful to get access this document outside of here or outside of this uh, lesson in order to see you know, all of the specific changes that I made. So at this point, I'm essentially working on writing things more efficiently. So at the very beginning, instead of saying, you know, after a few minutes of talking to her, you just say after a few minutes, I'm emotionally exhausted. I hate seeing people in pain. And so other times there's ways to be a little more illustrative with languages. So the idea here is not to use big words for their own sake, but to, instead of saying, you know, listening, you can say she unleashes her latest barrage. This is a, a much more, you know, use of, of illustrative and complex language that the, the reader can still understand. So you can kind of imagine the mom just sort of like, you know, complaining, oh my gosh, this happened and this happened and this happened. And, and it's, a, it's a little bit more descriptive than simply saying, oh, I was sitting there listening. Um, but it's also okay to mix things up. Like she unleashes her latest barrage of problems. I listen attentively. I watch as her tears, instead of saying pour down her face, you could say stream because it's a kind of a more realistic description. You know, we, you know, 
streams are kind of more of a, of a trickle. Um, and then we get kind of a little bit more of an illustration here. You have the daughter who's kind of giving her mother Kleenexes. And this immediately sets up a an essay tone that's a little bit different because we typically think of mothers supporting their daughters. But the whole tone point of this essay is that it's kind of the opposite. So we work on here instead of, you know, we, we can use present tense instead of the past tense. I, I don't I don't think she ever realized. You could say, I don't think she ever, I don't think she realizes how much she cut, suffocates me because this is all in the present tense here. So it's important to keep it consistent. Again, more economic. Throughout the time I have known my mom, you can simply say, my mom has always been alone. So just in this sentence here, we're saving, we're saving five or six words. And these can add up over time. So that's why it's important to write really long first drafts because in these line editings, you know, what, what might be a 12, 13 word sentence could, could change into a three or a four word sentence or also open up opportunities to add more complex or, or descriptive language. So I helped her kind of tie everything together. I mentioned this paradoxical situation. I feel like in most families, till children and teenagers complain of their parents, but with my family, the role is reversed. And it's a little more descriptive than, than the first sentence that was here. My mom has always had trouble making her problems her, but I was a whole different story. And it's that's kind of a vague statement. So the idea here is to make things a little more specific. And she talks about the issue she's had. When my mom started using me as a sounding board for her troubles, I kept mine inside. So instead of saying, at the same time, my mom started voicing her problems, I was keeping mine inside. And then we have this transition talking about school. She's literally trying to mispronounce her name in order for people to understand it. Again, we have more economical writing. With each school year, it saves three words at the beginning of each school year. Since we already have each year written, it's such a pain to correct seven different teachers when it is likely that by the next day they will forget. And so it would be repetitive there. With each fresh school year, I have the chance to start over. So again, we have a variety of line edits here. You know, we can even see what it looks like so you can read it more easily. I noticed that the teacher didn't have trouble pronouncing the names of my classmates. I began noticing that I was a little different. I was the only Indian. One day in first grade, I was eating my lunch, minding my own business. So this is a perfect example. What I suggested her was to provide a concrete example. Um, so this is a seamless transition. And so we can already assume that like the day that the one day in first grade will have to do with her being the only Indian. I'm at lunch, minding my own business. A white girl looked over at the lunch. My mom packed and started making a huge scene. So we have, again, more descriptive language, obscenely gaggy, moving as far away as possible. And it kind of talks about some of the long-term consequences. Unfortunately, the experience stuck with me longer than it should have. Mm -hmm. She even says, I would always try and eat discreetly. So this is one part where I help out is, is kind of having these, these transitional sentences where you can infuse lessons that really don't require that many words. And so whenever we, whenever we look at the very first drafts up here, we see that there are these really long stories that eventually we try and get down into a little more, a little more specific, more descriptive type of, of language that we're using. So let's go back down here. So I already mentioned the, the ideas I had for integration with our essays A and B, which we'll, we'll discuss in the next module, but you'll see how all the pieces put together in the end. So at the very end here, we'll do a final proof for you. I'll do this live um, because there's always things, even after some pretty thorough line editing here, there's always a little bit more work that we need to do, um, especially since I didn't have line edits here. We can go through this. Sometimes I'll even read the, the words out loud. This will help me catch any awkward phrases, things to change. I'll go ahead and access the, the Grammarly software and see if it recommends anything for us. And I'll turn off comments so we have a little more space. All right, let's see. After a few minutes, I'm emotionally exhausted. I hate seeing people in pain. See, she's more specific here. So we've defined the problem about her in-laws. I listen attentively. Go ahead and remove this little phrase here. We've cleaned up this sentence a little bit. Tears stream down her face as I trade damp Kleenexes for fresh ones. I don't realize how much, I don't think she realizes how much she suffocates me.
it's okay. This is a slightly awkward sentence, but it's okay in its form. Again, your reviewer is going to be doing a quick read, so at times it's, it's not, even during the proofread, it's not, you know, really healthy or helpful to agonize over individual sentences. See, I, had, I added in this, this sentence here, and then we cleaned it up a little bit and, and divided the one sentence into two. And most families, children, teenagers complain to their parents. We could say, instead of, if my family, you already know family is the, the subject of the paragraph. In mine, I've accepted this role reversal. When my mom started using me as a sounding board, I kept, it's not specific what mine is, my problems inside. I don't remember why, but in kindergarten, I came up with my American name. And Lily's telling us to correct the quotation mark period. My teacher couldn't pronounce my name correctly, so I overemphasized each syllable in a heavy American accent. The pronunciation is Rumya. Instead, for the past 11 years, to make my life easier, I've always told teachers it's Rumya. Let's clean up this sentence a little bit. It's such a pain to correct seven different teachers when they when they probably forget it. Once in fifth grade, my friend gave me the confidence to assert myself. So this is uh, a little bit of a distinction, even from the previous drafts. So we're working on that uh, kind of content lessons learned tone piece of the of the editing process. And this sets a really good stage. Even though we were halfway through the school year, I quietly corrected my teacher at the end of class. Miss Perry, it's Ramya. It turned out she knew the correct pronunciation all along. I was ecstatic, but my joy was short-lived. So this is, you know, kind of a, a really nice personal touch. Um, whenever reviewers talk about voice, these are the kinds of things we're talking about. You can literally imagine the students sort of thinking like, oh yeah, this is, this is, this is, yeah, this is a, a success. And then she said, yeah, but this is kind of short-lived. Views as to which correction, to which, so then she talks about some of the issues that she faced. So again, when we talk about complexity and things not always being totally straightforward, she could say, oh, I corrected my teacher and everything was okay. But she says, no, it's actually a little more complicated than that. Um, and then the worst case scenario is stop calling her name altogether. Now it's just a nameless face. I didn't feel like I talked to my mother about what in high school was a big deal. And this ties back into that original introduction about this role reversal and how she kept her problems in. So, uh, what we look for during the proofreading is that all of the narrative streams tie together and so that, you know, the, the introduction, body, conclusion uh, tie into one. And she starts to look at these cross-cultural differences that we mentioned before. Remember the defining the specific lunch, my tasty Indian rice pilaf. A white girl looked over. So this is a bit of an awkward sentence. We can condense it a little more. So we removed about seven words there and then didn't really take away from any of the content and began making a huge scene of seeing the guy using the table numbers. So Grammarly is saying to, to kick to remove this phrase probably because it's informal, yeah, empty phrases, but I think it's okay to leave this one here. Again, this Grammarly is just a, a suggestion, not something you have to always follow. So after a couple of days, I told my teacher she meet and I told my teacher, let's remove the semicolon. She immediately moved her to a new table. Should have been the end of the story. Let's make it a little more specific. Unfortunately, the experience stuck with me longer than it should have. I slowly began despising my culture. I felt embarrassed when my mom, this is past tense, had packed me Indian food instead of the sandwich that I... Requested, that's okay. You could say requested, wanted, desired, but I think requested's okay. Let's say, instead of saying was, anytime you can change a be verb, because I felt so ashamed. I kept my pain inside. Again, it's that original theme from the introduction. I refuse to tell anyone, including my mom. I continue to work through this through, continue to work through my embarrassment alone and hide my perceived differences when I can. Thankfully, the scar is fading. 
This is a little bit more casual as well. I refuse to let the words of some six-year-old girl diminish my sense of cultural pride. But again, in college essays, this, this type of language is okay. I mean, after all, these are 17, 18-year-old teenagers writing. And, you know, it shouldn't read like, you know, an adult writing an essay. And then she kind of ties back together. I'm blessed to have such a rich culture to immerse myself in, making self-acceptance easier. I'm blessed to have such a rich culture to... Just say, make it a little shorter. It makes self acceptance easier. And then we tie it back in. This is sort of the concluding paragraph. While, meanwhile, my mom's rants grew worse. I knew that I was the only person she could talk to in confidence, so I never really fought back. She thought it was okay to dump all her problems on me. Mothers and daughters stereotypically have difficulties getting along, but I refuse to accept this. Let's say. Again, more condensing. I spoke up to her a year ago, but things still aren't ideal. We both realized that to cooperate and grow together, we need to be able to lean on each other during tough times. We have our work cut out for us, comma, and I would do anything to maintain a close relationship with my mom. Through all of these experiences, I've learned how important it is for me to stand up for myself. So this is the kind of the takeaway from this whole essay. It's kind of self-acceptance, standing up for yourself, advocating. I've never enjoyed being a bother or imposing myself. Let's see what this is. Incomplete comparison. Now that I'm older, I recognize that I'm the only person So it's not the best concluding sentence, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and leave it again. You know, the, the reviewer's looking at this for a kind of a big picture read. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of from start to finish how this student over the course of a few weeks was able to uh, construct the SAA that they eventually submitted. So in the next module, we'll talk about SAA.